What's going on everyone? So Lix here with another YouTube tutorial and today we're going to be talking about how to use like um, analyzers in order to see if your beats are mixed or leveled properly. So really quickly I'm just going to you know just show you this quick beat that I just made and let you listen to it really quickly. So that's basically what we're going to be looking at today. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to show you my instruments and everything that I use. I basically use a plot sound that I created using Serum. I also use Xpen 2. Um, mainly use two sounds that I really, really like. The Solo Violin Plus and the Hard Heart Plus. I used a hi-hat from the Capital Drum Kit from Simon Savita. TB Digital's um, drum kits or drum samples from his All You Need drum pack. And then I use a sliding 808 pattern or a sliding 808 with a sliding 808 pattern from using Serum as well. And that's basically all the sounds that we're going to be looking at today. Over here, I already have everything leveled properly and to my liking. And over here on the mixing channel, I have everything leveled as well. So all we all we're going to be looking at today is on, going to be on the master channel and we're going to be looking at this plugin called Spam or uh, Spam Plus. It used to be called C Spam when I first got it but it's not Spam. Now what Spam is is basically a analyzing plugin so if I were to play like the if I were to play like the actual beat as you can see, like whenever I play the beat, I'm sorry about that, but whenever I play like the um make the sounds or whatever, you can see that at the bottom over here, it's showing you where the sound is as far as like the frequency spectrum. Now if you're using like parameter EQ2, you can basically see the same thing. I'll play it real quick. Yeah. So you can basically see the same thing as well with the new Permage EQ visualizer. And yeah, it's basically, instead of it being an EQ, it's only just mainly, it's only a, an analyzer. So you're only going to be able to analyze your beats and see exactly where it is as far as like the frequency spectrum. Now, this is a really important plugin when you're trying to like see, you know, where all your sounds are basically being placed as far as the spectrum and I also like to use it to see how loud you know certain sections are so really quick I'm just going to play at the loudest part or at the loudest section and then show you a cool feature called hold <laughs> Alrighty, so this um, hold button right here basically it, it allows you to hold or you know give a snapshot of the frequency as it was playing and you can basically see you know where everything was placed at that exact time now as you notice I don't have the bot version of this plugin mainly because all you really need is the demo version or the free version which is fine um, you don't really need to pay for this plugin I only use this I only use this just to like view my frequency spectrum and to only use it for like this feature right here so really quickly I'm just going to show you some things like if you've never seen this before or if you don't know what this means so I'm just going to show you really quickly what this means or how to view this so let's say you know since these two are very similar over here right on the far left just like you would see on like your EQ over here this is your bass and your subs and basically all of your lower end instruments so your kick would be about you know somewhere in the middle over here just like it would be like kind of like right here if you were to play the kick and this would mainly be like your 808 your bass and things like that as you go further up you're going to be hitting a lot of your instruments over here you know just as you would over here with your low mids your mids your high mids and as you go further further up you're going to be hitting a lot of your higher end instruments or samples like your hi-hats your snares your claps and you know if you want to use like white noise 
So that's basically where everything. Um, sorry about the car. Sorry. But that's basically where everything sits as far as like the frequency spectrum and as far as like the analyzer will show you. But I'm going to show you some things. Um, I'm mainly going to give you about three tips on how to like make sure that your beats are cleanly level and cleanly mixed. So let's say over here, right? Let's say you wanted to make sure that your bass was loud enough to where it basically supported the lower end for your beat. But also, you know, it's not too overbearing. So a rule of thumb, well, not really a rule of thumb, but something that I use a lot to make sure that my beats are pretty much level is that I make sure that my bass on my low end is never above negative 30 dB. So I'm going to zoom in really quickly to show you. So right now at the section where I held like my, um, my analyzer, the lower end is just below negative 36, but when I play it fully at the loudest section or the loudest part of the beat, it does kind of go above negative 33, which is fine. The thing that you want to do is basically try to get it a bit as close as you can to about negative 30. And the reason why you want to do that is mainly whenever, I, whenever I'm making beats, whenever I get my bass to about that level, it's the bass is loud enough to where it's rocking my headphones. And that's sort of like, you know, what you want to do. You know, if mainly if you want to have like, loud in your face 808s or loud in your face like bass but you don't want it to be too much you don't want it to go past this negative 30 line right here and that may that that tip mainly applies and this also goes for tip number two for your higher end as well so a lot of people what they do if we were to go over here to let's see yeah, so if we were to go over here to like our claps and our hi-hats over here, what a lot of people do is that they'll just hike up, you know, the higher end or, you know, just boost the higher end frequencies a lot. And sometimes that's good, sometimes it works, but you mainly, you also want to make sure that it never goes above that negative 30 line over there, mainly because if you do that, it's going to be too loud. And me personally, I don't like my I don't like my hi-hats my claps and my snares to be too loud because like my ears are very sensitive so I don't you know I don't like to do that but if you like it you know you can do that but just make sure it never make sure it doesn't go above negative 30 dB as well if you're looking at an analyzer um also another important thing is to make sure that your your mids or your main melody doesn't have too many holes within the sound of it or within the sound. Um, if you're looking at the analyzer right here, what you could do is like zoom in and see where exactly you're having these holes. So what you can do, let's see, let's go over here. So let's say I'm coming over to like my main melody and I'm looking at, oh, sorry, get rid of this. So I'm over at the main instrument or the main melody, and I see that there are holes at around at around 1.77 kHz. So what I could do is just come over here, just grab you know one of these frequencies, and just come to about uh, what was it again? 1.775 kHz. So about. So about right here so let's say that I just wanted to like boost that I can come over here view where the hole is and then just make like a small cut just a small right there oh, I had it uh, I had it well you, you you get the gist so you can do that just to make sure that when your melody is playing that there aren't too many holes but then it's on like little section and you can get a full or uh, a full feeling of the whole like melody and the last tip or the last thing I want to discuss is how to form the shape of your frequency so what you want to achieve when you're making your beats or when you're making like your spectrum right here is you want to make sure that your sound is producing something like a smile 
or a valley. So if I don't play it, you know, play it again. Ah. And sorry about that. Um, I just saw, it, I just noticed that my base doesn't go above negative 33, but it did before. But um, as you can see with the analyzer, when the beat was playing, like my mid section wasn't trying to go above either the higher end or the lower end. It just kind of stayed in the middle and it just formed like a smile, like a weird kind of like crooked smile. Um, the higher end, I don't like it too much. You can have it a bit louder than what I did. You know, it, it's really dependent on you. But for me, that's basically enough as to where I wanted it to be. And as I said before, the lower end, you want to make sure that it's a tall mountain, but it's not too tall. It's not going above that negative 30 dB line, as well as the higher end. So those are some things that you can basically do to make sure that your beats are properly level and properly mixed together to make sure, you know, all the sounds are playing. You're getting a full frequency spectrum and you're not having like too many holes or too many problems within your beat. And most importantly, you know, if you're trying to sing your beat off to say an artist, you got to make sure you have to make sure that there's enough space within the beat for vocals or anything else that wants to be added. So with that, um, that's it. This is the end of the video. I think I appreciate you all for listening to my video. I hope that this tip helps you a lot. And, you know, if you want to see anything else or if you want to see any improvements, just let me know down in the comments. I'll take, you know, anything into consideration. And yeah, um, I appreciate you all. And I, you know, hope you have a good day.